Hi, this is Ryan Sadam, co-founder and chief experience officer at Client Savvy. Welcome to another installment of the CXPS Knowledge Sharing Module Series. This week, we bring to you Reed Tolley of Talent Matters. Reed's executed some really interesting research around what makes a good and effective CX leader. Before I turn that over to him, let me do just a little bit of housekeeping. As always, please uh, check out the clientexperience.org website where you'll find information about getting into the mural activity, which has some great engagement tools for you to supplement your learning and contribute to the broader conversation for this knowledge sharing module. And if you're watching this during the release week, then please know that we have a live Q&A scheduled this coming Friday at one o'clock Eastern with Reed, where you can ask all of your questions. We'll also have some networking and breakout time for you to meet some of your peers within the community. These are reserved for members of CXPS. So if you're watching this and you're not yet a member of CXPS, we do hope you will join us. You can do that at clientexperience.org. I wanna take a moment to thank all of our sponsors. And then I'm gonna turn this over to Reed. Reed, please take it away. Thanks, Ryan, and hi, everyone. I'm looking forward to sharing what we learned from leaders of CX. We studied 15 leaders who have led, who are leading recognized, highly recognized client experience uh, implementations in their firms. They have been recognized both by PSMJ and by Client Savvy. Uh, the project goal, the, the goal of our research was to uh, create a, a client experience assessment tool to help select and develop client experience leaders. Uh, I've long been a, uh, the client, client experience has long been a value of mine. Uh, as I've become aware of and familiar with the client savvy uh, process, I, I see it as a great way of embedding uh, client experience in the culture of a firm to, in order to create competitive advantage. It has struck me that uh, selecting the right person for this leading a client experience um, effort is a critical success factor. You know, uh, too often hiring looks like this. You know, we, we refresh or write a job description, we advertise, we, we collect resumes, we interview. We do the best we can to select the person who we think will be able to do the job, but then we hope and pray. The Harrison Assessment provides the predictive analytics needed to select the right person for the right job consistently. And we set out to create a better way to select client experience leaders. More specifically, the questions we wanted to answer, you know, what was be, what's behaviorally different about leaders of organizations that have been recognized for their client experience? Um, and, and what have these leaders learned about implementing the client experience that others might benefit from learning? There were two, uh, two components to the research that we did. Uh, participants in the study uh, were first posed five open-ended questions that you can see on this slide. Um, and we did some interesting things with the, their responses. And the responses uh, pointed us to uh, trait tendencies or behaviors that are important and that were different about these leaders. We asked what was, you know, what, what have you learned about what is most important to client experience? What surprising things have you learned uh, about client experience? What traits and capabilities are important um, for successfully leading an implementation inside a firm? What skills and confidence did you personally have to develop or strengthen to effectively champion client experience within your organization? And I have found that uh, adding a free space uh, is a good idea in doing open-ended questionnaires. There's just always something that people wanna say and they just, we, I just didn't ask the right question. And we've got some really rich uh, ideas from that free space question. And then finally, uh, we asked the, the last question we posed to these 15 leaders of client experiences, what were some of the hardest things for people to give up or change when undertaking a client experience uh, implementation? Uh, we're in this, in this 20 minutes or so, we're going to do, share with you some of the highlights of these of the responses we collected. Uh, on our mural, there will be the, the full unabridged 
summary of their of their responses will be will be posted. The second part of the of the re, of the, the research methodology that we did was uh, the, those fifteen CX leaders completed the Harrison assessment. And for those of you who are not familiar with the Harrison assessment, the Harrison assessment is a behavioral assessment that measures an ecosystem of 175 behavioral tendencies and preferences. Um, and what we we're after was providing the town analytics to pinpoint the unique tendencies of leaders of recognized client experience uh, implementations. Uh, so we, we created the end result, or and our goal was to create a behavioral competency analysis tool that could help uh, people who are leading client experience efforts strengthen their leadership as well as to provide assistance to organizations to hire the right person to lead their client experience uh, initiative. Want to I we want to share with you some of the survey themes that we heard. Um, and uh, these uh, themes became clues to uh, traits, you know, behavioral tendencies that were unique to these group of 15 client experience leaders. And you can see some of the highlights there that just phrases uh, that I cut and pasted uh, you know, onto this slide, you know, a true interest and desire to serve, understands the client's business objectives and perspectives, you know, drives accountability for client-centric culture, and walks the talk and is an example for others. You know, these, the, 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 survey, the, the survey responses you know, indirectly provide us clues to critical behaviors for those leading client experience uh, implementations. In the Harrison assessment system, essential traits are key drivers of success for a specific job. Essential traits are what was unique or different about these 15 leaders that have, uh, have led successful client uh, uh, experience implementations and have been recognized, their firms have been recognized. The, uh, the survey also provided us clues to what are called desirable traits. And I'll come back to that term desirable traits in, in just a few minutes. Um, you know, some of the highlights, some, again, some of the other comments that we got, you know, from those open-ended questions that we posed to these 15 leaders, you know, acts as a true partner to, in success, understands that internally we must rely on one another to ensure we're delivering our clients' best experience, creates positive client experiences for, with anyone, regardless of the relationship, follows through, is, is, is relentless in the pursuit of client relationships. Uh, that last comment is, 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 a, is an insightful too, allows teammates to develop and find their purpose. Um, and again, you know, more survey comments that provide us with clues to important behaviors exhibited by these 15 client experience leaders. Uh, in the Harrison system, desirable traits uh, while not drivers of success, success like essential traits, a desirable trait, um, the absence of a desirable trait at a certain optimal trait strength can hinder one's success. You might think of, of desirable traits as kind of the backup singers in a band or, uh, you, know, the, you know, the music wouldn't be quite so rich if, there, if the backup singers weren't behind that, you know, that lead singer. And so desirable traits work quietly in one's background uh, supporting one's success. And so it's important for uh, desirable traits not to be too, too weak or too low. It's really important for essential traits to be strong or high. Um, the other uh, category of traits that we identified when we did our research was uh, traits to avoid. And traits to avoid are, are, are kind of interesting. They're, you, you could think of them as the derailers to, center, to steal a, a center for creative leadership term. They're the uh, behavioral habits or tenancy, we, tendencies that we have that undo our, our good intentions. And often they're invisible to the person that's exhibiting or has certain uh, traits to avoid. And you can see the clues we got. Uh, don't be a pleaser. Uh, don't be overly harsh or punitive. Listen, ask good questions, keep an open mind, be your authentic and transparent self. And that last comment is really powerful. You know, be clear, uh, direct and to the point, even when the client doesn't welcome the news. I thought that was particularly, you know, a, a particularly powerful stu statement. And again, uh, you know, the, so the survey also 
you know, indirectly pointed us to unproductive behaviors or tendencies, uh, behaviors that would uh, inhibit uh, anyone who's leading a client experience implementation or effort that would, would in inhibit their success and of the, the project itself. This is a very busy chart full of numbers. And uh, so, um, you know, just, just uh, briefly, you know, the, the Harrison, we, the 15 client experience leaders completed the Harrison assessment and, you know, it, me it measures 175 behavioral tendencies uh, or preferences. And we're able to do things like calculate averages, ranges, uh, correlation coefficients. So the, the survey, uh, the open-ended survey questions provided us with, you know, a, um, a qualitative data. The Harrison assessment provided us with quantitative data. And so we merged the two together. And what you see on the next page is how we mapped Harrison traits, uh, you know, to uh, both to the the the, the open-ended survey that we that we collected, as well as the Harrison assessment data. And for example, um, you know, you see that survey uh, item, uh, you know, the, the true the survey quote there: "True interest and desire to serve is motivated beyond personal recognition." financial gain and achievement by achieving, uh, by contributing to a greater good or su and success of our clients, strives to provide services and partnerships with those whose values align with yours. In Harrison lingo or terminology, that's called cause motivated. And the data suggested that it should have a trait strength of eight or in that essential trait uh, range. And, um, you know, so, you know, that, um, so, you know, the second, oh, the other thing I was going to mention was, you know, what in my work with AEC firms, I find cause motivated uh, to be a strong tendency or preference, and that's the desire, uh, you know, to uh, make society better. And uh, I assess so many uh, people, professionals in the AEC industry, uh, and their cause motivated is always high. It, it seems to be in the DNA of DNA of the industry. Another uh, qualitative uh, survey response we got was, you know, understands the client business objectives and perspectives, leverages all revenue generating offerings, financially astute. In the Harrison, uh, in the Harrison term world, that's called an interest in finance and business. And the assessment data indicated this should be an essential trait for a client experience leader and it should be set at a, a trait strength of eight, which is extremely high. And so just a little taste of how we took the open-ended survey and the Harrison assessment data to begin to build a behavioral profile for, of an ideal client experience leader. In the, just a, a, you know, elaborating and just a little more expanding on this, um, you know, so we're, we're building a success, we're, we set out to build a success profile. What's different about client experience leaders who've, who've, whose efforts, uh, whose firms have been recognized? And we're focused, so we're trying to identify essential traits, desirable traits, and traits to avoid. Our research pointed to 12 essential traits. And again, essential traits in the Harrison world are key drivers of success. And by the way, uh, you know, everything the Harrison assessment measures can be developed. It is not a personality assessment. And so any, th any assessment, any Harrison assessment, if there's things that are, uh, if there are gaps, these are, these are things that can be developed by the person receiving a, a Harrison development report. The essential traits we identified uh, for client experience champions are listed here in order. From uh, you know from one to twelve, but these are these are all uh, key drivers of success. These are all what was different or distinct about the fifteen client experience leaders you know that we studied in our in our research. And um, you know from my own experience, um, you know wants wants to lead is uh, is a is a critical um, preference uh, for anyone you know taking on this role as well as wants challenge and and takes initiative. And these were all things that were common in the 15 individuals that we, uh, that we studied. 
as well as things like uh, open reflective, you know, um, open reflective to feedback of clients, but also open reflective to peers and associates that you're working with in implementing client experience in that firm. And also, I think experimenting is, is uh, you know, being willing to try do different approaches to implementing client experience. I wasn't surprised that experimenting uh, was identified as a critical behavior for CX champions. The, over on the right side of the slide, you just a little bit of a, uh, just a, a, a screenshot of an example of a, the client experience behavioral competency report. Um, and it, there, there's an overall score uh, that's displayed. And then uh, below that are, are all of the details of how a candidate scored on each of these essential traits. Desirable traits, we identified 14 desirable traits. Um, and again, remember th these play a supporting role. Um, if they're not uh, sufficiently developed, they can hinder success, but they're not quite as important you know, as those essential traits. And uh, on, I, on the slide here, we've identified the top seven, there were 14, but here's the, Here's the top 14, um, collaborative, optimistic, persistent, uh, systematic, um, you know, warmth and empathy, uh, valuing, uh, you know, working in teams, and kind of a paradoxical to uh, systematic is flexible. At the same time, you know, the, in the behavioral DNA of these 15 client experience leaders we studied, there definitely, there was a, a flexibility and an adaptability that's an important uh, behavioral tendency to successfully leading client experience. And finally, the third category of traits that we identified in building a, you know, a profile, behavioral profile of these 15 client experience leaders was traits to avoid. And remember or recall that you know, traits to avoid are behaviors that, that uh, often cause people difficulty and they're often invisible to the person. Um, you know, the traits to avoid are often the result of over-reliance on certain uh, behaviors. Uh, and they, they're often the result of, in Harrison terminology, uh, a, a paradoxical trait imbalance. And to kind of elaborate on that point, how Harrison, the, the Harrison assessment identifies uh, traits to avoid, you see the paradox called communication. And this paradox is all about effective interpersonal communications. And, and it turns out that people are really effective interpersonal communic communicators have, to have a two seemingly opposite or paradoxical trait tendencies. They, they're very comfortable and skilled in being frank, direct to the point. And at the same time, they have this incredible capacity to state things in a tactful manner. And people who are balanced have access to both of the, these, these behaviors. They can be very frank when they need to be. They can be very diplomatic when they need to be. They can be the perfect blend of these two behaviors situationally. Um, and when somebody has an imbalance, they, they over rely on the behavior they know and love. And that, uh, that uh, imbalance can cause them difficulty. And those imbalances are what Harrison identifies as traits to avoid. And just the uh, top six uh, traits to avoid that we identified in our research uh, that, that would be derailing for somebody leading a client experience uh, implementation uh, in their firm, uh, self-sacrificing, harsh, uh, dogmatic, defensive, self-critical, and evasive, a, a very direct, indirect uh, communication style. And um, the other thing we did uh, as part of this project was created a behavioral uh, interview guide uh, for firms engaged in selecting uh, a internal client experience uh, executive sponsor or, or champion. And for those of you who are not familiar with behavioral interviewing, behavioral interviewing is a really powerful interviewing technique and it's based on the premise that past performance is, is a strong predictor of future performance. So in an interview setting, you get the person to tell you examples of when they've done certain things. And, um, and um, you know, so for example, uh, one of the number one essential trait, uh, I've never seen it this high before, but in, in when we study client experience leaders, 
the number one essential trait was called was it was cause motivated and so we provide a behavioral interview that gets the person talking about you know about um about that that trait tell me about what uh motivates you most when working with clients that is what keeps you going performing at high levels is feeling appreciated financial compensation or something else entirely and then we provide uh in the interview guide um targeted behaviors so we provide to the person doing the interview or the interview panel behaviors to look for in an interview setting and so it really paints a clear picture of if that person has is strongly cause motivated what would it look like and it's so it's a it's as part of this project we we've created this behavioral interview guide uh to you know to help organizations uh select the right person for this job and to validate what the Harrison assessment seems to be saying about this candidate um i th i think also this tool could also be used in uh, indirectly as a way of pinpointing uh, as well uh, to develop incumbents you know the behavioral anchors paint a real good picture of of what each trait looks like uh, behaviorally we've created packages for to help firms select uh client experience candidates and we've also created a, devel a development report package to help incumbent client experience leaders or their executive sponsors you know to help develop them and the Harrison development reports uniquely uh, uh pinpoint very specific behaviors if developed or changed would strengthen that person's uh impact in champion or leading a uh, client experience in this case just a little bit about talent matters my firm uh you know our mission is to help organizations and their associates achieve their potential and long range success and we achieve our mission by the services that you see listed there um and often times we in creating very custom solutions for our clients uh, you know if there's a common denominator it's the Harrison assessment the Harrison assessment is for us is a um a very powerful and versatile tool in helping us create a uh, very custom talent selection and development and succession planning solutions for the AEC firms uh, that we work with there's my contact information uh for a summary of our white paper uh champion client experience uh please email me if you'd like to experience the Harrison assessment yourself uh please email me my contact information uh is also at the bottom of this page too and this will be posted on our mural thank you if you have any questions post them in the mural or i look forward to answering them directly uh, during our live q and a this coming friday Wow, Reed, that is some amazing research you've done. I know that has been a challenge or a concern. A lot of people have been trying to figure out how do we identify who the best people are to lead a CX transformation in our organization, one that's likely to be successful. I know just about every one of the 15 CX leaders that you studied in this research, and I can say this data certainly confirms why they are being so successful and winning awards for the CX delivery they're doing in their firms. Those of you who are watching this during the launch week, please jump into our mural activity so you can engage and, and uh, get some of the resources that Reed talked about. And please be sure to show up this Friday, one o'clock Eastern for the live Q&A where you can ask Reed all your questions as well as engage in a breakout activity with some of your peers. And once again, if you're not a member of CXPS yet, please visit clientexperience.org in order to join us. Thanks, and we'll see you all soon.